to do all that, Dad? Is it going to do all what? It's going to circle this room twice, fly into the dining room, fly back in here, and land. Are you sure, Uncle Martin? Oh, sure. Operates by remote control. It won't hit the lamps, will it, Martin? Will you relax? I'm the oldest pilot on the line. Okay. Here we go. It's not flying. They sure don't build them like they used to. Uh, it's probably defective equipment. Probably. Kathy, where's Patty? She's getting ready for a date on that lake. Say, who put this picture of Richard in the living room? Patty thought it would look nice here. She was wrong. Tell Patty she can just put it back in her room. Tell Patty she can just put what back in her room? This picture of Richard. What are you all dressed up about? Big date. You know, I did him an injustice. I didn't really appreciate him. Do you know something? He's handsome, warm, brilliant, and punctual. I'm really a very lucky girl. I'll go let him in. Richard is handsome, warm, and brilliant? To each his own. Well, I know, but that's ridiculous. I've never seen Patty so worked up about a date with Richard before. She usually takes him for granted. Yes, she acts as though this is a special occasion. I think it is. Mom, Papa, I'd like you to meet my date. Colonel Jeffrey Davis III. <laughs> Live most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Berkeley Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. Jeff is a cousin of Harriet's. You remember my girlfriend who moved to Indiana Harbor? Well, she wrote me that Jeff was coming to New York. And I tried to get him a date, but Kath was tied up and all the other girls were busy. So I guess he stuck with me. I was lucky. Oh, I'll get it. You're a newspaper editor, aren't you, Mr. Lane? Uh, yes. And a great one, if you don't mind my saying so, sir. I'm editor of my school newspaper, and we use the Chronicle as a model of journalism. Do you really? Yes, sir. Do you know anything about airplanes, Colonel? It's a Beechcraft Musketeer. It's a good model. It just won't fly. Dad couldn't get it airborne. Did you turn the propeller, sir? <laughs> well, what do you know? I just came over to help you out. Help me out of what? Well, you said you were stuck with this cousin of a friend of yours from out of town. Uh, yeah, well, you, you know how these things are. It's a drag. I know. That's why I came over. I thought if I went along, it'd make it a little easier. Uh, yeah, well, that's very nice of you, Richard, but it's my drag, and I sure wouldn't want to impose on you. Well, listen, if a fella can't do a favor for his gal, who can he do one for? You're absolutely right. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? Well, I would, Richard, but you know how, how nervous these small-town boys get in front of strangers. Boy, you're really stuck, aren't you? Yeah, well, I can handle it. Why don't you just well, run listen, along I'll now? just go in and say hello and put him at ease. <laughs> uh, Rich, uh, look who's here, everybody. It's Richard Harrison. Uh-oh. Hello, Richard. Richard. Hi, folks. Uh, Richard, I'd like you to meet Colonel Jeffrey Davis. This is Richard Harrison, my... 
A friend of mine. It's a pleasure, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Colonel, please call me Jeff. Won't you sit down, Richard? Thanks, I will. Harriet gave me a list of places for you to show me. Oh, sure. I, I wouldn't want to let good old Harriet down. How long are you going to be in New York? Well, I'm not sure. I'd like to stay here as long as possible. It's very hot in New York during the summer. <laughs> Do you go to the same school as Patty? That's right. I'm captain of the football team. Oh, I'm afraid I never made captain. I play end. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. Yes, I was lucky. It's the first time anyone from our academy was chosen to play all conference. <laughs> you all conference? Wow, can I have your autograph? Oh, I don't think sports are really that important. I'm much more excited about the Oxford Scholarship I just received. You received an Oxford Scholarship? Yes, sir. That's one of the reasons I'm in New York. That's great, Jeff. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> The Oxford Committee insisted upon seeing me in person. Why, weren't they sure about you? I suppose not. You see, I'm the first student they ever had with an A-plus average. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, remarkable. Sir, what time would you like Patty home? I, uh... uh <coughs> what time would we like Patty home? Well, why don't you give yourselves time for a soda after the theater? Yes, ma'am. I'll deliver her to her doorstep at 11.37. <laughs> Thank you so much for the hospitality, Mrs. Lynn. Not at all. You must come to dinner sometime. I'd be honored. What about Thursday? Well, thank you, ma'am. They have spaghetti on Thursday. <laughs> Would you like to come to dinner, Richard? No, thanks. I'll uh, be very busy that night. <laughs> Good night. Aww. Good night. Well. He's quite a boy. Take away the uniform and what have you got? Just an all-conference end who's won an Oxford scholarship. Good night, Ross. Me and my big mouth. Good night, everybody. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I brushed them yesterday. Ross? All right, all right, but I'm going to wear them out before I grow up. <laughs> don't you think you should have gone with Patty and Jeff? Of course not. You don't know much about strategy, do you, Kathy? Strategy? Sure. I figure a little bit of Colonel Davis goes a long way. By 1137, Patty's going to be sick of the sight of him. <laughs> Jeffrey Davis III is absolute heaven. His family owns a thousand-acre estate in West Virginia. We're all invited down for the month of August. They have horses there. One of them just won the Kentucky Derby. Jeff used to race in the steeplechase before he got interested in chess. He's the national junior champion. He's so brilliant, I can't understand what he's saying half the time. Are you going to see him again? Let's see, what's tomorrow? Can't you take him off my hands for a few days? Jeff? Richard. Oh. Did you see the way he shambled in here? <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm captain of the football team. What are we having for dinner? Oh, boy, apples. <laughs> they serve spaghetti on Thursday. You going bowling? 
Thanks, dear. What's that? You know you adore Richard. Of course I do. Jeff's a whole new way of life. I wonder if it would help Richard to go to a military academy. I don't know. <laughs> I have to make up my mind which one I'm going to the big dance with a week from Saturday. Have they both asked you? They will. Kath, would you mind uh, going with the one that I... Uh, the word you're fumbling for is... Ditch. <laughs> I already have a date for the dance with George. Oh, well. Then I guess one of them is out of luck. Poor devil. Hi, Patty. Hi, Rich. Oh, thank you. What time did you get home last night? 11.37. Oh? How'd it go? Uh, okay. Well, I guess these duty things can be a pain in the neck. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got a surprise for you. What's that? I've got two tickets to the Jerry Mulligan concert tonight. Gee, Richard, I'm sorry. I, I won't be able to go with you. Well, why not? Uh, I promised Jeff I'd go out with him tonight. Uh, you know, for Harriet's sake. Sure, well, where do you have to go with him? The Jerry Mulligan concert. My card. Oh, good evening, Richard. Um, Patty's out. I know. That's not why I came. We've already had dinner. That isn't why I came here. Well, these, is there something I can do for you? Oh, no, I just thought it'd be nice if we got to know one another better. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Richard. Oh, well, thanks. Um, Patty has uh, been seeing quite a lot of Jeff lately, hasn't she? That's why I came. I don't mind if Patty goes out with another guy now and then, but the Colonel, I don't know how you compete with him. He's, he's superhuman. Well, no one is superhuman. Jeff is. He can do anything better than I can, and I'm good. Well, uh, Patty seems very impressed with him. I'll say. I have a stamp collection. Jeff has a bigger one. I have a souped-up car. Jeff has two. He dances the Watusi, and I'm still learning how to do the twist. He beat me at Indian restaurant, ping pong. If he was a girl, I'd marry him myself. Well, what can I do, Richard? Well, I, I thought maybe you could... Give me some advice or something. I mean, you're a man of the world. Uh, how do you compete with Superman? Well, every new boy seems uh, glamorous and uh, more exciting, Richard. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Mr. Lane. Richard. You know, there was a Jeff in my life. There was? Yeah. When I was dating Mrs. Lane, he was a pilot, and he could do everything, too. Mrs. Lane was quite taken with him. Well, what did you do? I mean, how'd you give him the deep six? <laughs> oh. Well, I just used a little strategy. See, uh, I knew Mrs. Lane liked me, but we were in a kind of a rut. We'd always do the same things. Uh, go to movies, bowling, football games. Oh, like Patty and me. Exactly. So I started planning things that would intrigue her. See, every young girl likes to do things that are different once in a while. Now, there's a, there's a little lake about an hour and a half outside the city called Half Moon Lake. Hi, mind if I join you? Be my guest. If you're not going to do anything tonight, I thought maybe I, you'd like to... Gee, Rich, I'm afraid I... I thought it'd be fun to go on a picnic to Half Moon Lake. A picnic on Half Moon Lake? That sounds great. I've never done anything like that before. You mean you'll come? Sure. I thought you were going to suggest a bowling or another movie. What do you mean? You think I don't have any imagination? Yes, sir. Things are going to be a lot different around here from now on. Sam, my good fellow. <laughs> Triple angel flips for my friends. <laughs> Sport. 
Daddy say what time she'd be home? No. She and Richard went bird watching in Central Park. Bird watching? Yes. I don't know what's come over Richard. He's just full of plans that Patty loves. Reminds me of the days when I was going steady with Patty's father. He used to do things like that. I guess Patty's a lot like me. Is she? Well, Mrs. Lane, what was it about Mr. Lane that appealed to you most? Oh, I don't know. His helplessness, I suppose. His helplessness? <laughs> yes, women really have a very strong maternal feeling. I think I really fell in love with him the day he had a hole in his sweater and I decided to knit him a new one. You know, Patty, this is the first sweater that anyone's ever knitted for me. Oh. <laughs> when you told me how cold it gets up at Oxford. Well, I couldn't very well let their star pupil freeze to death. Well, I guess I'd better call Richard and tell him I'll be late. Are you sure he won't mind? Of course not. Anyway, I'll be through with this in no time. Of course, it's my feet that really get cold. <laughs> That's easy. I'll just knit you a pair of socks. What color do you like? Oh, blue, green, gray, tan. <laughs> Richard, you're up against a pretty smart boy. He's smarter than I am. But you have a secret weapon. I have? Me. You? <laughs> the other morning at breakfast, Patty was saying that one of the things she likes most in the world and hasn't done in years is riding a bicycle. Gee, that was fun, Rich. I haven't been bicycle riding in years. Whatever made you think of it? Well, I just put myself in your place and asked myself what you'd enjoy. It's, it's funny, I was just talking about it at breakfast the other day. No kidding! Yeah. I guess you really know me. Yeah, I guess I do. Can we have a date tonight? I'd love to, Rich. But Jeff asked me and I half promised oh. him I... Have you ever been to an old-fashioned quilling bee? <laughs> when will you pick me up? 7.59. I'll be ready. Bye. Where am I going to find a quilting pin? <laughs> you know, Mrs. Lane, I was very interested in that conversation we had the other day. Uh, which conversation? Well, the one about you and Mr. Lane and how you married him because he was so helpless. Oh, I didn't say that. Well, sure. Don't you remember? The maternal instinct? Oh, I'm afraid you misunderstood me. Oh, women do have a strong maternal instinct, but they also want a man who's strong and who will dominate them. I'll let you know when I make up my mind. Look who's here. Hi, Jeff. I was just... On your feet. <laughs> we are going out. But I was... Let's go. Bye, girls. Wow, did you hear that? Talk about cavemen. <laughs> but he's not like that. Something's going on. Too bad we don't have a daughter. She could be doing this. Oh, I told Patty she didn't have to help tonight. She's getting dressed to go out. Again? Who's a lucky boy? Richard, I suppose. No, Jeff. Jeff? Richard took her bicycle riding and she thought it was wonderful. Oh, but then Jeff swept her off her feet and I think it impressed her. Oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. Richard has taken her picnicking and bird watching and... Jeff needs her more. She knitted him a sweater and half a sock. Natalie, you haven't been advising Jeff how to handle Patty, have you? Why, no. He was just interested in the way I... In the way you handled me. Yes. Have you been advising Richard? Yeah. Oh, Martin. <laughs> you realize what's been happening. You've been telling Jeff how to handle Patty, and I've been telling Richard. We've been competing with one another. Oh, boy. What made you decide to help Richard? Oh, I don't know. I lost my head. No, actually, I like Richard, and besides, Jeff is just a little too perfect. I know. That's why he doesn't have a chance with Patty. We women like him, perfect men. Oh, I wonder how I got you. Well, how do 
do you like your daughter? We like her. In early tonight. You know Jeff, old delivered to the door at 9.38. Well, it's become very domineering lately. I like it. What about Richard? Oh, he's great. He's always thinking up new things to do. Have you ever heard of a corn husking contest in New York? <laughs> well, bye. A corn husking contest? You know, darling, I think your contender's in trouble. No, Patty is not here. Goodbye. No, Patty is not here. Yes, I'll give her a message. She'll be back very soon. Goodbye. Jeff, every time I talk to him, I feel like saluting. Hi, folks. What's up? AT&T. There have been several thousand calls for you in the last few hours. I feel like an answering service. Who well, called? Jeff three times, Richard four times, some boy named Scotty three times, a girl named Ann, Otto eight times. Wonder what Ann wanted. Probably your own number. <laughs> Jeff and Richard want to speak to you very urgently. Poor dears. I guess it's about the big dance. I really shouldn't keep them in suspense any longer. Well, we shall await the outcome anxiously. Good night, girls. Good night, Mom. Papa. Patty. Hi, Kath. I just ran into Maggie. She was telling me about her date for the dance. Oh, so she finally hooked somebody, huh? That's great. Who's she going with? Colonel Jeffrey Davis III. <laughs> what? Oh, there's some mistake. It must be some other Colonel Jeffrey Davis III. There's a mistake. But I'm afraid you made it, Patty. He was so sure from the way you talked that you were going with Richard that he asked Maggie. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a fickle man. <laughs> All right, I'll go with Richard. I'm afraid you won't. Who says so? Richard. He's taking Sue Ellen. <laughs> Sue Ellen is going with my Richard? Now, don't blame Richard. He was so sure from the way you spoke that you were going with Jeffrey. But he asked Sue Ellen. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Patty. You know what just happened to me? In 60 seconds, I went from femme fate how to just plain old fatal. <laughs> Gee, you look great, Kat. Thank you. Are you sure you won't change your mind, Patty, and come to the dance? George's cousin would be happy to take you. No, thanks. I don't want charity. Besides, I have a date, and we're not going to any pokey old dance. Do you really have a date? Cross my heart. Is it someone new? I've never been out with them before. All right, then. Have fun. You too. Bye. I'm sorry you had to miss the dance, darling. Oh, well. Can't win them all. Patty, do you remember that Aesop fable about the fox and the chicken? Sure, Papa. This fox had a chicken in his mouth, and he was passing over a river, and he saw his reflection in it. And he thought it was a bigger chicken, so he dropped the one he had. And he lost them both. Morrow, be happy with the chicken you've got. I'm ready. Okay, let's go then. What's play? Well, what do you care? How many times do you get treated to a movie by a femme fatale? Don't wait up for us. Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins And you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike You can lose your mind When cousins Papa, 
you know how you always wanted me to be a culture vulture? I don't recall using that phrase. Well, you know how you hate rock and roll music, and you always wanted me to be interested in classical music? Yes. Well, I am. W wait a minute. You mean this morning you went to school liking rock and roll, and this evening you came home liking the classics? You must have left out the middle part. That's the surprise. I tried out for the school orchestra, and I made it. They're going to give me an instrument and free lessons. I'll be playing all the classics. That's wonderful. I had no idea you were interested in music, Patty. She isn't. I've heard her say. You know, I can't tell you how delighted I am. You know, you're really a chip off the old block. You know, I worked my way through college playing the piano. Boy, that, that's wonderful. We can have our own little music cows around here. Kathy can play the violin, I'll play the piano, and uh, what's your instrument? I brought it home. I'll go get it. Patty didn't mention a thing to me about this. I guess she wanted to surprise me. Well, I'm more than surprised. I'm thrilled. There's going to be a whole new atmosphere around here. Here it is. Leave Kathy's lip post everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Kathy's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. The adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet, still they're cousins, identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike, you can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. early this morning. That's wonderful. My ears hurt. <laughs> I'm not a musician, Martin, but isn't she playing a lot of wrong notes? What makes you think that, Aunt Natalie? Well, now, she's playing a few, but that's what practicing is for. So you can learn wrong notes? Well, it wouldn't hurt you to study an instrument. Excuse me. Can I get you something, Mark? No, no. I'll be right back. Good morning, Richard. Not anymore, is it? What happened? Everything. Oh. Patty had a quarrel. It wasn't even a quarrel. She interested in some other guy? With some other guy, I can handle it. I lost her to a tuba. I don't understand. Patty suddenly got this thing for long-haired music. Since she joined the school orchestra, she's got that silly tuba wrapped around her all the time. Sorry, Richard. I'm afraid I'm on Patty's side. I'm delighted that she's taken up a musical instrument. You want your only daughter to be a tuba player? I do you think it's going to be her life's work? <clears throat> well, look at it this way, Richard. You've lost her to Mozart. It's bigger than both of you. Martin? Gee, I thought maybe you'd be on my side, Mr. Lane. Sorry, Richard. Tell her I'll send for my rock and roll records. <laughs> for a little while. I've 
been trying to write a letter. You mean music bothers you? No, music doesn't, but... Pat, you haven't stopped playing that thing all week. Well, how am I going to learn if I don't practice? Could you go somewhere else and practice? Where? How about Chicago? <laughs> I thought you liked music. Listen to this. recognize it any place. Thank you. No, Kath. Papa was sure right. I always thought long hair music was a drag. But boy, it really lifts you. You mean playing that lifts you? It's not so much what I'm doing now. It's what I'm going to do. I've decided to give concerts. On the tuba. Oh, that will be a novelty. I'll be the only woman tuba player in the world. We'll play everywhere. London, Paris, the Bronx. Posters will simply say, Patty Lane and her tuba. The theaters will be sold out as soon as we're announced. Of course, it will be a lonely life. But it's all worth it. One day, you're walking down the street in a strange city, and people recognize you. You hear them say, there goes Patty Lane in her tuba. And they say, Miss Lane, my mother took me to hear you play when I was a little girl. Changed the whole course of my life. Think of all the happiness I've brought to people. Oh, I can't. I get all choked up. Me too. It's like Eddie says. Who is Eddie? Oh, he's the one who got me interested in this. I see. He's got a form an all-girl band. He plays everything. Clarinet, sax, oboe. Uh, I believe that's pronounced oboe. Oboe, oboe. He plays it. What does Eddie look like? Like Leonard Bernstein, only with more talent. And it was Eddie who suggested you take up the tuba. Yeah. I guess there aren't too many girl tuba players around. Well, back to culture. What's that? She doesn't even stop to eat. I think they feed her through that horn. <laughs> You've got to stop her. Oh, Natalie, we both love music and we want the children to appreciate it, right? Right. And I don't care what anybody says, that's not music. Well, it's the beginning. Couldn't she begin a little softer? Tuba's a tuba. Just comes out loud. All right. If you can stand it, I suppose I can stand it. Well, the important thing is not to discourage her. Don't you remember at the beginning how we were afraid that she might not stick with it? Yeah, those were the days. But she has stuck with it, and that's wonderful. If we discourage her at this point, it, she could easily lose interest in it. Promises, promises. <laughs> Just give it a chance. All right. Remind me to buy some earmuffs tomorrow. <laughs>
can't you sleep? Oh, sure. I was just uh, enjoying the music. <laughs> um, I got your pair of your muffs there in the drawer. Oh? I don't need them. As you wish. Night. from the bottom of the pot. I'm sorry, Martin. I'll get you some coffee from the top of the pot. All right, all right. Never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's just I, I have this terrible headache. I, I'm not myself. I'll say. Boy, I'll be glad when you get back. <laughs> Is there anything I can do, Uncle Martin? No, thanks, Kath. <laughs> Let's go out. I'll take you to the movies. Darling, we've been to the movies every night this week. There's a concert at the Lincoln Center. Why no. No music, please. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go to the movies. If there's anything in town left to see. <laughs> I wish she would get that passage right. It doesn't go that way. I mean, if Beethoven had wanted it played that way, he would have written it that way, right? <laughs> Unless you wait here, I, I don't want to embarrass Patty. Of course. Sit over here. Sure. It's about the tuba, isn't it? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is, honey. I knew it. You didn't think I could stick it out this long, did you? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Oh, well, you were right, Papa. These great composers make everybody else sound like nothing. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Patty. The, the thing that you have to realize is that some people are naturally talented as musicians and others aren't. That's exactly what Eddie says. I'm a naturally talented musician. <laughs> oh. oh, I love culture. I'm going to dedicate my whole life to it. A, a lot of people laugh at the idea of a girl playing the tuba. But do you remember what you always told me? It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it as well as you know how. Did I say that? <laughs> no, I you know, Papa, I think I've been letting you down a little bit. How? I haven't been practicing enough. <laughs> Don't you know? From now on, this tuba will never be out of my hand. I'm sure glad we had this little talk. Thanks for encouraging me. Yeah. I guess there are a lot of fathers who wouldn't take the trouble. Well, if you can't encourage your own daughter, who can you encourage? You're wonderful, Papa. <laughs> I hear 
Eddie's going to announce who he's picked for his all-girl band. Yeah. We should be hearing any day now. Why don't you try out for it, Kathy? I heard you play the piano, and you're great. Thank you, Molly. But I'm afraid I haven't time. I'm involved in too many other projects. Well, we'll miss you. You sound as if you've been picked already. Well, let's face it, there aren't too many girl tuba players around. Kathy? Maggie? Molly? Patty, I didn't recognize you without that horn wrapped around your neck. Well, if it isn't the king of rock and roll. Patty, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Well, we haven't got much in common, but go ahead. Uh, you see, there's this uh, jazz concert at Carnegie Hall tonight, and I thought maybe... Uh, we... Jazz concert. Poor child. Well, you used to love him. And when I say used to, I'm, I'm talking about last week. I've developed a lot since then, Richard. I've acquired a taste for the finer things in life. Here's your triple sweetheart flip. Oh, thank you. Well, you've changed overnight. Well, that's the way it happens sometimes, Richard. Like a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. Exactly. What am I? A housefly? Whatever you are, Richard. I'll always enjoy having known you. Why, oh, when she gets off from one of these things, you... You can't even communicate with her. I'll send you a couple of free tickets to my first concert. Bring your wife. I will. And my grandchildren. Peasant! Mm. Hurry up, Natalie. She's going to start again any minute. Won't you take me with you? Please. No, I'm really sorry, son, but you have school tomorrow. Are you going out? Yes. Are you going out? Yes. I thought you said you were going out. We changed our minds. Yeah. Um, where are you going, Patty? Eddie's taking me to a concert. Eddie? Yeah, he's her Svengali. And he just so happens to be the greatest musical genius of our time. His father's a conductor. Are you allowed to talk to him while the train is in motion? <laughs> How long have you known Eddie? Two weeks. Oh, but it seems like I've known him all my life. He's taking me to hear Shostakovich tonight. Honey, I think that's pronounced Shostakovich. We'd like to meet Eddie. Oh, you're going to? He's coming by to pick me up in a few minutes. You know, we, uh, we haven't seen Richard around here lately. Oh, tin ear. He wouldn't even know who Shostakovich is. That's Shostakovich. Well, I'm really very disappointed in Richard. He just hasn't developed intellectual wise. That's Eddie. Hasn't he got a musical ring? Mom, could you fix your hair a little bit? And Papa, straighten your tie, hmm? And you... Oh. We could wait in the garage if you'd rather. No. Well, you're all right. I just want you to make a good impression on Eddie. He's so sensitive. I'll go let him in. I think you could call me a fair and reasonable man. Oh, of course you are. Well, I haven't met this Eddie yet, but I hate him. I can't stand it. Eddie, I'd like you to meet my parents. This is Eddie Blake. Hello, Eddie. It's nice to meet you. As my father, Carl Blake, the famous orchestra conductor, always says, pure tone is no accident. Does he really? Patty tells us you're quite a musician. Yes, I'm very good, actually. I not only play 21 instruments, I also compose. <laughs> I think we'd better be going. Uh, we're hearing uh, Shostakovich, you know. <clears throat> That's Shostakovich. And since you're a musician, it might not be a bad idea if you learned how to pronounce it. Oh, you mean Dmitri Chostakovich. That's exactly who I mean. He's hopelessly old-fashioned. No, Patty and I are going to hear Igor Chostakovich. Really, avant-garde composer. <laughs> Good night. What do we do now? We get rid of that name-dropping prodigy and bring back old Tin Ear. <laughs> Igor Shostakovich. <laughs>
Well, Richard, Mrs. Lane, and I certainly appreciate your coming over here. Yes. Richard, would you like an apple? Uh, oh, no, thanks. Uh, what did you want to see me about, Mr. Lane? <clears throat> well, we thought it would be nice if you and Patty started dating again. Oh, I don't think Rohana Pollock would like it. Who is Rohanna Paula? She's a girl who happens to play the tuba ten times as good as Patty. And she doesn't think I have a tin ear. And boy, is she crazy about me. She doesn't sound like your type. Richard, <laughs> you and Patty should be going swimming and bowling and to the movies. All those things you used to do. Patty's not interested in those things anymore. They're not cultured enough for her. All she talks about is Stasha Volchik. Uh, that's just... <laughs> Patty gets off on these wild kicks, and boy, until she gets back to Earth, it's murder. You're going to help her get back to Earth again. I am? Right. You can begin by taking her to a concert. Now then maybe afterwards you could go on to supper, and then a couple of nights later you could go to the theater. And pretty soon you'll be back to movies and rock and roll and bowling. Well, you see, uh... Now, Richard, I understand that this is going to cost a little money, and we would like to help you. I think, uh, I think maybe that should do the trick. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? I've got my pride, and I can't be bribed. You can tell Patty it didn't work. I'm still going to take out Rohanna Pollock. Patty had her chance, and she lost it. Good night. Didn't work. I know. I, I heard. Cass, do you have any ideas at all? You could just forbid Patty to go on with the tuba. No, I, I can't. You see, I encouraged her to take up an instrument, and, and I've always preached to her how important it is to practice. There is a way. What is it? No, I, I couldn't do it. Would it work? Yes, but it's too mean. Kathy, this is an emergency. Uncle Martin, do you think Patty has any talent as a musician? I mean, does she have an ear for music? Absolutely none. All right, then. I'll do it. Will it get that tuba out of this house? Yes. But if Patty finds out what I've done, it will probably get me out of the house, too. She's here. Mm. Oh. Oh. That ungrateful monster. I work my lips to the bones. I'll never trust another musician. What happened, darling? I'll tell you what happened. Eddie told me he was going to hire me as his tuba player in his all-girl band. Well, today I found out he hired somebody else. Who? Oh, some girl named Rohana Pollock. I don't even know how she found out he was forming an all-girl band. <laughs> well, maybe it's all for the best, darling. I'll say. Tomorrow I take this thing back to school and I never want to see it again. Patty, you're not too heartbroken about giving up the tuba, are you? I guess not. I don't mind dedicating my life, but not to anything that looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go now. Where are you going, Patty? Bowling with Richard. With Richard? Oh, is that on again? Yeah. It seems he was going with this Rohana Pollock, and now she's so busy rehearsing, he never gets to see her. Bye. Boy, talk about killing two birds with one stone. It worked. It certainly did. I can't tell you how grateful we are, Kathy. You know, actually, Patty's idea about being in the school orchestra wasn't a bad one. As a matter of fact, I tried out for it myself today. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the
George. Kathy? What's the matter with good old George? Nothing's the matter with good old George. Something's the matter with stupid old me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought you and George were buddy-buddy. Oh, we were getting along fine, Patty. Except that George only seemed to call me when he couldn't get another date. I wanted to make a real impression on him. So, I wrote to the Lovelorn column in Mr. Narsco's paper, asking his advice. Have you ever read that column, Simon Says? I've heard of it. Well, Simon advised me to make a date with George and stand him up. He said, give him the shock treatment. I did. Now George won't even speak to me. <laughs> Gee, Kath, I'm sorry. Oh, you're not nearly as sorry as Simon is going to be when I get hold of him. <laughs> Hello, son, and here's your mail. It's been piling up. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. Matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet! Still their cousins, identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. You haven't touched your breakfast, Kathy. I'm really not very hungry, Aunt Natalie. Is anything wrong? Nothing I won't get over. Would it help to talk about it? Some things are better left undiscussed. I don't mind talking about it. I just made a fool of myself. Oh, look, Kathy, you don't have to tell them about it if you don't want to. I'd probably feel better if I discussed it. I could kill him. Kill who? There's a new advice to the Lovelorn columnist on our school paper. He gave me some silly advice and I took it. Now George won't even talk to me. Well, that's too bad. Who writes the column? Nobody knows. I've heard all kinds of rumors. It's supposed to be a teacher, a senior, a professional newspaper man. I hear he works miracles. Maybe he just didn't follow his advice properly. He told me to stand George up, and I stood him up. Well, that doesn't sound like very good advice to me. What's his full name? Simple Simon? <laughs> oh, look, there are ways and ways to stand a boy up. He should have done it without hurting George's feelings. It was a good maneuver. You just didn't execute it right. Do you really think that's it? I know it is. You use the iron fist, but you forgot the velvet glove. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Why didn't I go to you for advice? Huh? <laughs> yeah, what do I know? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write to Simon again and ask for more details. After all, he's a man. He should know how to handle men. <laughs> no doubt about it. I'll write him this afternoon. Cuz? Yes? Sign it. Dissatisfied customer. <laughs> oh, if you feel like it. Dear dissatisfied customer, if your boyfriend has stopped talking to you, it's a very healthy sign. You've got him all stirred up. Simon says to let him see you out with another boy, and he'll come to his senses. From then on, he'll be eating out of your hand. That doesn't sound right to me. Sounds great to me. It's the old jealousy bit. It never fails. But George is very honest. I don't have to play games with him. 
Kathy, I think Simon knows a lot more about men than you do. <laughs> I suppose you're right. I'll give it a try. You won't be sorry. Where's Kathy? She's in her room, crying. <laughs> crying? What happened? She had a fight with George last night. About what? Well, Kathy went to the shake shop with Harold, and George saw them there, and... And? And instead of getting jealous like he was supposed to, he told Kathy he was glad she had someone to take her out, and he decided to go steady with Audrey. I don't understand it. Kathy was so fond of George. Why did she go out with someone else? I think it was something she read. Simon says, strikes again. Uh, excuse me, I think I'll go check and see how Kathy is. He's not worth it, Kath. He didn't even know enough to get jealous. Who needs him? I do. Patty, I, I want you to do something for me. <laughs> sure, anything. You just name it. Find out who Simon Says is. I'm going to tear him limb from limb. <laughs> triple sweetheart flip, one double deck of delight, one rainbow nightmare, and one chocolate soda. Are you sure you won't have any dessert? No, not right now, Sammy. Thanks. Listen to this. Dear Sammy, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the fight. Dear Simon says, my steady boyfriend went out with another girl and I found out about it. What should I do? It's signed, three's a crowd. And here's his answer. Dear three's a crowd, don't be a clinging vine. Tell your boyfriend it's all right. When he finds out what a good sport you are, he'll come running back to you. Good advice. Good advice? I'm three's a crowd. I haven't seen Howard since I told him he could go out with anyone he liked. I had a small fight with Alfred last week, and after following Simon's advice, it's turned into World War III. Listen, who is the Simon Says character? We've got to get him. He's ruining my life. Mine too. The rumor is he's a famous B&E psychologist. That's what I heard. Me too. Yeah. I wonder who started that rumor. Yeah, I wonder. Come to think of it, I think I first heard it from you. You did? Yeah, so did I. Well, then, if you heard it from me, there must be something to it. Look at all this mail. All that for me? Your column has really caught on, Patty. It gets ten times as much mail as all the other columns combined. Hey, that's great, isn't it? Tell me, are, are most of the reactions pretty favorable? Well, no one's a hundred percent right. You must be hitting a thousand. Uh, yeah, speaking of hitting. I want you to promise me you'll never tell anybody who Simon is. But why? I think you'd want everybody to know you're writing such a hot column, Patty. Oh, uh, I wouldn't want a whole bunch of kids fawning over me. Hmm. Will you promise? If you say so. Simon says so. <laughs> Listen to this. Dear Simon Says, I am a teenager. I've been going with one girl and she's a dog but she's possessive and jealous. Please advise me. Signed, Stuck. He's stuck, all right. <laughs> Dear. We've watched Simon Says. Uh, what do you want him for? Just tell us who he is. We'll take care of the rest. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Kathy, but we're not allowed to give out that information. How many men work on the staff of the Bugle? Oh, I, I don't...
don't think he's a regular staff member. Uh, at least, I've never seen him. Pete, I want to know where to get in touch with him. So do I. Where is he? For gosh sakes, will you take it easy? Take it easy? We're being destroyed by this maniac. Oh? Uh, uh I tell you what, I'll, I'll have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. Well, you'd better do it fast. My boyfriend Alfred wrote in asking him how much money Simon thought he should be making before he got married. Simon advised him to join the Merchant Marine. And he did. That was Alfred? What was Alfred? I mean, that's Alfred always running off somewhere. Well, he wouldn't have run off if it hadn't been for Simon Says. We want him. Calm down. I'll report your complaints and get back to you. You'd better. If you don't do something about it, we will. Let's go. <laughs> anything yet? Uh, I'm working on it. How does it look? I think he's an English brain surgeon. <laughs> I'll let you know when I find out something more definite. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Well, congratulations on your happy fan club. <laughs> Can't win them all. Hi, Patty. Hi, Sue Ellen. Excuse my barging in like this, but I didn't have anything to do tonight now that I'm not seeing Howard and I got kind of lonely. But I thought we might watch television. Sure, why not? Come on in. I guess a lot of girls at school are having the same problem. With everybody fighting with their boyfriends, there's not much to do evenings. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hello, Sue Ellen. Well, hi, Kathy. So, he got you too, hmm? Yes. I was just shot down in flames. We've got to do something about Simon. Ever since he started writing his column, every one of us has broken up with her boyfriend. If we don't get him, we're all going to turn into old maids. <laughs> well, you don't have to take his advice, you know. It doesn't matter whether we do or not. Our boyfriends are taking it. Looks like you're the only one not having any trouble. <laughs> you know, good old easygoing Richard. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Hi, Tommy. Tommy? Oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Why don't you call Alice? Oh, you don't. Well, I'm sure everything will work out. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Tommy. Sorry, Alice. The nerve of him calling to ask you for a date. Well, he said since he's not seeing you anymore... Excuse me. Hello? Hmm. Hi, Alfred. Alfred? No, I, I can't. I'm busy tonight, Alfred. Why don't you call Maggie? She is not. She's a great girl. I'll see you in school tomorrow, Alfred. Bye. Boy, what'd you do to him? He's sure mad at you. I followed Simon's advice. He did? What name did you write to Simon under? Troubled spirit. Why? Oh, just curious. Excuse me. Oh, hi, Rich. Hi, Patty. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I won't be able to go with you tonight. Well, that isn't why I came over. Oh, it isn't? No, I came over to tell you that I've decided it would be better if I started going out with different girls. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've been thinking it over, and oh, I'm too young to be a martyr. What did you say? Well, I've, I've got my own life to think about. I've decided to go out and join the human race. I don't want to get stuck. Stuck! Stuck! What? I mean, uh, somebody must have told you that. Don't listen to her. Him. Them. Well, I'm sorry, Patty. I've had advice from a wise old v &E psychologist. And I'd be foolish to ignore it. A wise old v &E psychologist. Or an English 
brain surgeon. I don't know which. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's good advice. I'll see you when I have time, Patty. Bye. Oh, Richard, you... We've got to put a stop to Simon Says. Oh, Says. <laughs> Say. And I think I know just how to do it. You do? I'm going to set a trap for him. What kind of trap? <laughs> we don't know who Simon is. It could be any one of our boyfriends. That's right. Oh, what kind of trap? <laughs> or it could even be one of our teachers. Sure. Uh, what kind of trap? Or perhaps it really is the Viennese psychologist who's gone mad. What about the trap? Or it could be someone from the other school. Right. So, since we have absolutely no idea who Simon is, I think it would be better if I didn't discuss my plan with anyone. Well, you can trust me. Of course I can trust you. But I have to set this up myself, Patty. Can't you tell us anything about the trap? <laughs> I can tell you one thing. Yeah? It can't miss. Hi, Pete. Hi, Simon. Shh. <laughs> What's the matter? We're alone. I don't care. Never say it. Not even to yourself. Oh, if word ever gets out, limb from limb. You love long columnists. Sure living an exciting life. There's a telegram for you. I'm going up to see the principal. The principal? What for? I don't know. He just said he wanted to see me. That's it. That's what? The trap. <laughs> so, they went to him to force you to tell on me. What are you talking about? The freedom of the press. He can't force you to tell. Patty, who says he's going to try? I say so. Pete, you promised. Nobody's to know I'm Simon. I don't care how he threatens you. I want you to stand on your principles as a newspaper editor. Mr. Brewster wouldn't threaten me. That's the spirit. You'll back me up? <laughs> you bet I will. Thanks, Pete. I knew I could count on you. So that was the trap that couldn't miss. <laughs> It's from the Pan Ocean Press Service. They want to syndicate Simon Says. They do? Yeah. Imagine. Me syndicated. I'll be famous all over the world. In Paris, Simon D. In Madrid, Simon D. In Italy, Simon D. In Moscow, Simon Govorit. <laughs> Hello? Who? It's the overseas operator. They're asking if there's anybody here by the name of Simon Says. The overseas operator? That's it. It's the Palace and Press Service. They'll want me. What'll I do? Take the call. I can't. They're probably expecting a Viennese psychologist or an English brain surgeon. They must be interested in the column or they wouldn't be calling. It doesn't matter who you are. You're right. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I can. And don't worry, I won't crack. Thanks, Pete. Hello? <laughs> yes? Yes, it's Simon Says. I cannot hear you, operator. Could you speak a, a little louder? We got it. <laughs> It's London calling. Are you still there? I am here, operator. Who is calling? <laughs> it's the Pan Ocean Press Service calling. <laughs> Mr. Blodgett. Do you hold on, won't you? Take over. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hugh Blodgett here in London. <clears throat> Simon says here in America. <laughs> Would I be interested in worldwide syndication? You're right. He sounds Viennese. Keep him talking. Let's go get him. 
Oh, I'm so sorry I couldn't find Patty. Mm, yes, she'll be still missing all the fun. <laughs> When can we meet the discuss this, old chap? Uh, I do not think we will be able to meet. I have a very busy schedule. Uh, may I suggest you just uh, send me a contract? Uh, no, uh, I could not fly to London. My schedule would not permit it. Well, perhaps I could fly there? Uh, no. I do not think that would be a good idea. It would be much better to do the business by mail. Your three minutes are up. Five cents, please, for the next five minutes. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you still there, old chap? Hello. Hello. Who? Simon Says. Was a man in here just using a phone? Was that Simon Says? Oh, he just ran out of here. <gasps> oh, what did he look like? Well, he was, he was about six feet four, gray bushy hair, and a monocle. He looked Viennese. Oh, he slipped by us. It's all right, Simon. Mr. Brewster didn't even ask me about your identity. <laughs> he just wanted to talk about the anniversary issue. I think I really... Look, it was all in fun. I was only trying to help you. What is your sense of humor? Simon says, help! Hello? Howard? This is Patty Lane. Yeah. Uh, Howard... I know about the fight you and Sue Ellen had. You see, really, it was all my fault. How? Go on, tell him. Uh, uh, Howard, you want to laugh? <laughs> I'm Simon Says. <laughs> Not anymore, you know. <laughs> Hey, uh, business seems to be off tonight. Where are all the crowds? Back with their boyfriends where they belong. Oh, I see. I understand you're not in the columnist game anymore. That's right. I've been demoted to selling want ads. They have a new Simon Says. Who is it this time? I hear it's one of the teachers. Well, you'll have to go some to replace you. I know how to handle boys. I guess I'm just no good at advising others. Where's Richard? Oh, him? I guess I advised myself out of Richard, too. <laughs> I wrote to the new Simon Says about it. You know what he said? Stay home and forget it. I'm leaving now. You have a date with George tonight, huh? Yes. Any advice? No. <laughs> I'm glad everything's straightened out between you two. Funny you being the one to catch me. Someone had to do it. That must be George. <clears throat> Patty, I know you meant well. Oh, I always mean well, Papa. <laughs> Just never turns out right. Well, there's one good rule to learn. Before you give expert advice, be sure you're an expert. <laughs> I remember it. Although I doubt if I'll ever have any chance to use it again. Well, hi, Richard. Hi. Hi, Richard. Hi. What are you doing here? Simon Says said you'd be miserable without me. <laughs> Simon Says said that? That's right. I did. Hi. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a 
crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are... Congratulations. Hi, group. You're home late, aren't you, darling? I got fascinated by something at school. Anyone we know? It's not a he, it's a nit. I know, Richard. We're studying unions in our civics class. Papa, hmm? do you know anything about management and labor? Well, I should. I have belonged to a couple of unions, and I'm on the Labor and Management Committee down at the Chronicle. Well, then you know about Samuel Gompers and all that. Yes. Who's Samuel Gompers? He was only the father of the whole labor movement. It's really interesting. Our teacher asked us to pick a practical project to work on so we'd learn more about it. Sounds like an excellent idea. Papo? Have you ever heard of UAFM? I beg your pardon? Oh, the U-A-F-U-M. No, what's that? It stands for the United Association for Unprotected Minors. Sounds like a good idea. Who are they? Us. Uh Who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet The ballet roots Grape Suzette. Our Patty loves her rock and roll. The hot don't makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. You're not serious about forming this union, are you? I certainly am, cousin. What do I need a union for? I'm just a kid. I'll tell you what you need a union for, kid. How much is your allowance? Fifty cents a week. How'd you like seventy-five? I need a union. You don't need a union to deal with your own family. They give you everything you want. Oh, sure. But this way we'll have more strength. Now when they give us something, they're doing us a favor. Once we're unionized, they have to give us what we want. Patty, I have a feeling there's disaster ahead. Will you stop being a worry bird and leave everything to old Patty? How soon do I get my 75 cents, old Patty? Immediately. We're going to call a meeting of labor and management. We're here as a grievance committee for the UAFUM. Oh, what's your grievance? Kathy's father has just sent her an increase in her weekly allowance. I feel it only fair that I should have an increase, too. When she says I, she means we. Oh, yes, I'm speaking for the entire membership. <clears throat> well, as, uh, as management, your mother and I feel we should point out that uh, being the member of a union carries its obligations as well as its privileges. We understand that, Papa. Patty, do you feel you really need a union? Well, certainly. Everybody's unionized today. It's kind of a status symbol. I, I don't really think it's necessary, Patty. Papa, it's part of the American way of life. What do you think, Martin? Well, I suppose it can't do any harm. Then we get the raise in our allowances? Well, I didn't say that. Oh. I, I don't see why Kathy's increase should affect you and Ross. What's the matter? Have you got something against collective bargaining? <laughs> well, you know, of course not. Papa, this is our first time at it. It'd be terrible for us psychologically if we lost. I must say, I've never heard that argument used before in collective bargaining. But I'm sure it's just because nobody's ever thought of it. Well, all right. You have your increase. Did I tell you? It worked. Thanks, Mom. Papo, it's going to be a pleasure doing business with you. Your management with real heart. Membership? We need another meeting. We'll be back. Bye. 
I didn't like the sound of that we'll be back. Martin, do you think we've made a mistake? No, of course not. This would be good experience for them. As a matter of fact, I was going to increase their allowance anyway. So we'll let them think they've won a victory. It'll boost their morale. All right, we've won our first victory. But we're not going to stop with that. We're just beginning to feel our strength. Boy, they were really frightened of us, weren't they? Of course they were. Because we're united. Patty, I really believe this is going to work. You bet it's going to work. If we'd known about this years ago, we could have been rich today. Do you realize a thing like this could sweep the country? We could organize all the kids in America. And charge them dues. Say a dollar a month. Even if we only got a million kids in, that's a million dollars a month. <laughs> Maybe we better concentrate on us first. We've already gotten what we want. Are you kidding, Kathy? We haven't even started. Well, what else do we need? Fringe benefits. Oh. Here. Take notes. First. Any member of the UAFUM who feels that he or she... Patty, you call these fringe benefits? Yes, sir. The members of the UAFUM feel they're just the man's and therefore we're entitled to them. Do you all in agreement on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It sounds unanimous. Mm. Well, I have some news for the UAFUM. We have our rights, I'm and our demands are reasonable, and we won't take no for an answer. If you think that we're... <laughs> what did you say? We're going to give you what you want. It's like magic. Of course, uh, <clears throat> there are one or two little things you'll have to do in return for these privileges. Sure, anything. Now, uh, you want to be guaranteed a movie every Saturday night. Yeah. In exchange for that, you wash the dishes every night. That sounds fair. Good. And uh, you want to stay up an hour later every night. Well, let's make that a half hour later. We accept. In exchange for that, you'll clean the patio every Saturday and wash the car once a week. It's a deal. You want to watch an extra television program every night. Um, let's make that three extra television programs a week, at least one of them educational. We'll take it. In exchange for that, you'll clean your room every day and do your closets once a week. That's okay. Well, that's it then. You've just seen a successful example of collective bargaining. You know, so I like this collective bargaining bit. <laughs> Real manual labor. Why don't we form a union? <laughs> don't worry, it's worth it. What's the matter with you? I am beat. I can't clean my room every day, it'll kill me. Think of all the benefits you're getting. What benefits? I've been working so hard, I wouldn't know a fringe benefit if it came up and hit me in the face with a wet towel. Are you sure Samuel Gomper started this way? Hey, there's a good movie on tonight at 9 o'clock. The Monster Who Conquers Yonkers. I think I'll go to bed a little early tonight, Patty. I'm awfully tired. Me too. Boy, being unionized sure is exhausting. You know, I think this is the easiest week I've had in years, and I feel a little guilty about it. The children have been wonderful. They've cleaned their room, done the closets, the patio looks beautiful. Yeah, I had a notion that letting them unionize was a good idea. Oh, you were right. Sometimes Patty gets carried away with her projects, but this one turned out fine. I think I'll recommend it to all our friends. <laughs> Want to go for a walk? Yeah. Why don't we check on the union first? <laughs> well, looks like you're doing a very good job. Thank you, Uncle Martin. Uh, while you're down there, Patty, be sure you get the hubcaps. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't forget the hubcaps, Papa. Hmm. 
We're going out for a while. Enjoy your television program. Thanks a lot. <laughs> See you later. Come on, honey. Bye. Bye. My back's broken. Move over. Patty, I don't think this union idea was so hot. We've never had to clean a patio before. We never had so many privileges before either. But what's the good of it? We're too tired to take advantage of any of them. <laughs> you know something, Kat? You're right. I think we've been outmaneuvered. We've been turned into slaves. I just want to tell the kids. <laughs> the patio looks beautiful. Yeah, you're really doing a bang up job. You know, after your rest, maybe we could sit down and do some more negotiating. <laughs> well, we're uh, off to play a little golf. I uh, hope you enjoy your movie this afternoon. Oh, today's the day you do your closets, isn't it? Well, I'll check them over when I get back. See you later. Bye. Patty, please don't do any more collective bargaining. I'm exhausted now. Don't you worry. I got us into this. I'll get us out of it. Tomorrow's another day. The house is sure quiet. I'm surprised they're not watching television. I suppose they're too tired. They had all those dishes to wash. Oh, Martin, do you think we're overdoing this? What's the matter? Are you anti-union? <laughs> well, they have been taking it very seriously. Well, I meant for them to take it seriously. See, I want them to learn that privileges carry obligations. You don't get something without giving something. I think that's an important lesson for them. I suppose you're right. But I've had so little to do since they joined the UAFUM, I feel guilty. I've become a lady of leisure. Well, how about a snack, lady of leisure? Fine. I'll fix your sandwich. Look at this. What a mess. Looks like they haven't laid a finger on it. What do you think happened? I don't know. Well, we better call a meeting of the Labor Relations Committee. <laughs> All I know is we had an agreement and you broke it unilaterally. What does that mean? It means you were supposed to have washed the dishes. We want automation. Automation? That's right. An automatic dishwasher. Well, we're not getting a dishwasher. That was not part of our agreement. Maybe not. But we figured out that we're putting in too many hours. We don't even have enough time for our fringe benefits. There aren't enough hours in the day. We could cut school. I have a better idea. You could cut out television. Oh, no. We already won that as a fringe benefit. You can't take it away from us. And we want a five-day week. Yeah. We work hard at school all week. We want Saturday and Sunday to rest. What about cleaning the patio? We won't use the patio. What about the dishes? We'll eat off paper plates. <laughs> I see. Now do we get the dishwasher? No, you don't. Well, then I guess the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Membership? Well, how do you like that? Well, I think it's kind of funny. I don't. I've gotten used to not washing the dishes. Don't worry. They'll come around. that they have been parading up and down the block with those signs all morning? I think it's kind of funny. I don't. I want you to stop them. Well, there's one way to stop them, but it's a little drastic. Let's do it. <laughs> Boy, you should have seen the crowd we collected. It was quite exciting. Yeah, people want to donate money. You should have taken it. Taken it? That's right. As of now, your allowances have been cut off. No work, no pay. However, you can reinstate our old agreement and go back to work. Without a dishwasher? 
without a dishwasher. I have to have a meeting of the membership. Excuse us. Everyone in the UAFUM, follow me. It worked. We haven't had their answer yet. Don't worry, they can't get along without their allowances. There's no point in going on, Patty. We put up a good fight, but we lost. What, are you some kind of quitter? I am. Before I joined this union, I was getting 50 cents a week. You shot me up to nothing. I have a lot of heavy expenses. Let's not panic. Look, we can hold out a lot longer than they can. On what? On our $30 emergency strike fund. Oh, boy! Do we have a $30 emergency strike fund? You bet we do. That's great. I've saved up $30 and... <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me. Now, look, Ross, it's only a temporary measure. You'll get your money back as soon as we renegotiate our contract. Patty, you can't take his money. I'm not taking his money. Our treasury is borrowing it. It's for a common cause, isn't it? Sure, the cause is common, but the money is mine. That money could last us two months. They can't hold out that long. What do you say, Ross? I say I've never been in a union before, and this whole thing is getting me very nervous. <laughs> Come on, Ross. All for one and one for all. You mean like the Three Musketeers? Exactly. No. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks, Ross. We've got him right where we want him. Or vice versa. Aren't you two getting up? It's 10 o'clock. It's Saturday. You mean you're going to stay in bed all day? Probably, Aunt Natalie. I see. How long is this going to go on? About two months. <laughs> you're going to become vegetables lying around in bed all day. That's what I told. We'll be all right, Aunt Natalie. Isn't there some way that we could settle all this? I mean, it's the first time we've ever had any union trouble around here. Our grievance committee is willing to negotiate. All we want are our rights. Your father and I think that we're right. We think we're right. I see. Well, good luck. Mom, you understand there's nothing personal in all this. Of course not. It's strictly management labor. Labor, management. <laughs> Do you know something terrible? What? I'm afraid my sympathies are with management. Sam Gompers would be ashamed of you. Oh, this is ridiculous. We're working our heads off and they're lying around like ancient royalty. It's the advantage of having a strong union. Martin, this has gone too far. We've got to stop them. No, we can't. It's a matter of principle. See, in the beginning, we made a promise to them that they could do this. So we've got to find some way to settle it reasonably. They're drunk with power. Why, right this minute, they're up in their room laughing at us while we do their work. Patty, we should really be downstairs helping with the dishes. I know we should. But how can we give in without losing face? Why are we Chinese? Why don't we just go down there and say we were wrong? It's a matter of principle, Ross. We can't give up everything we've gained. What have we gained? All I've got is a sore back and a, I'm out $30. We've gained the right to be heard around here. No, sir. We can't quit now. We can't let your mother do all the work. It isn't fair. I know it. Maybe we could secretly clean our closets. That's a good idea. No, she'd know. It'd be the same as giving in. Boy, I wish I could think of something. I know. Why don't we sneak out tonight and wax the car again? That's good. They're interested in getting, but they don't want to give anything. You don't really believe that, do you? At this moment, I do. Oh, Martin, why don't we just put our foot down and forbid this? Well, there must be another solution. Why don't they just put their foot down and order us back to work? 
You know your father. He wouldn't do that. Yeah. Popo's got principles. We're stuck. Patty, we've got to find a solution. It's no fun having nothing to do but have fun. That may be the smartest thing you ever said. Maybe the only smart thing I ever said. Couldn't we at least clean this room? It's a mess. No. Not until they're ready to negotiate. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Boy, I sure hope so. It's a big responsibility taking a whole union on your shoulders. On your feet! The management has just sent for the grievance committee. Did you hear that? They've given in! <laughs> Sit down, please. Ross said you wanted to see the grievance committee. Yes. We'd like to get this matter settled. So would we. We see no reason why we can't settle it right now. Oh, that's great. We don't want to be unreasonable. I mean, we're willing to compromise. Oh, I don't think you should have to compromise. You mean... We get the automatic dishwasher. We stay up an extra hour later, watch more television, go to the movies. Well, that wasn't quite what we had in mind. Oh? What did you have in mind? Well, your mother and I were so impressed with your union that we've decided to form the PAMP. <laughs> I beg your pardon? The P-A-M-P. That's PAMP, all right. That stands for Protective Association for Misunderstood Parents. You're kidding. Oh, no. No, we're perfectly serious. I can't tell you how thrilled I am about it. For instance, I voted myself an eight-hour day. That means you can have your choice of breakfast or dinner. I won't be able to cook both. But you're a mother. I'm a union member first and a mother second. Oh, boy. As far as the dishes are concerned, I'm assigning each one of you his own set of dishes. Now, you may wash them or not, as you please. Well, my eight hours are up, so I think I'll go off to bed and read. That's my fringe benefit for Monday. Have a nice day. You can't do that. Yes, I can. This may come as a surprise to you, darling, but we parents are human beings, too. What we give you... We give you out of love, not because we have to. We like it received the same way. Don't you know how much we appreciate you and Papa? Well, there hasn't been much indication of that lately, Patty. I guess I got carried away again. I'm sorry. Could you wait a second while the grievance committee votes on something? Votes on what? I make a motion that the UAFUM be disbanded forever. Do I hear any seconds? I, I second, second the motion. motion. Motion is seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried unanimously. You sure that's what you want? You bet it is. This is the worst mistake I ever made in my whole life. And she's made some beauties. Well, I must say that changes things. Natalie, I would like to move that we permanently disband the PAMP. Do I hear a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. The motion is carried unanimously. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad it's all over. Are you? Wait until you see the dishes waiting for you in the kitchen. I don't care. Neither do I. Well, now that I'm not a union mother anymore, I suppose I'd better go start dinner. <laughs> oh, it was a nice vacation while it lasted. I'll help you out, Natalie. So will I. Me too. Gee, I'm glad everything's back to normal. Hey, let's try to keep it that way for a while, huh, Patty? <laughs> sure. But you know, Papa, in spite of everything, a oh, bit old Sam Gompers would have been proud of us. <laughs> You're late, darling. I got fascinated by something at school. What did you say? Guess what we're studying in our zoology class. Live snakes. Look at this. Hey, Patty, Patty, no, 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 what are you... Oh, what are you so excited about? <laughs> Here's
here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins a quaint old English street. That's what everybody in school's calling me. You know that substitute teacher we have in American history, Miss McIntosh? Yes. Well, she finally got to me. She kept yakking about how spoiled kids are today and how tough the pioneer kids had to be in the old days. And I said I wouldn't have minded living in those days. And she said I wouldn't have lasted a week. And I said it would have been a ball. And I told her I could go for a whole week without using any of the modern civilized conveniences. And she said I couldn't. I'm on her side. But the whole school is talking about it. You mean you're supposed to live like a pioneer for a week? If they did it, I can do it. Times have changed, Patty. Or maybe times have changed, but kids haven't. I don't believe we're weaklings and I'm going to prove it. I've got to uphold the honor of my generation. Boy, is your generation in trouble. I'm to think of it, so's mine. <laughs> when do you start? I've already started. Hello? Hi, Rich. Listen, Rich, this is very important. Do you remember last week when we went downtown to get those things for school? Yeah. Well, I think you'd better hang up. Why? Because the telephone hasn't been invented yet. Oh. <laughs> Who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet The ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Patty, what exactly did you tell your teacher? I told her that I could go for a week without using anything we didn't have back in 1800. Do you have any idea what you're letting yourself in for? Pablo, I've got to prove that kids today aren't soft. Except in the head. Can't we put him up for adoption? Who would have me? You've got a point. Patty, aren't you going to use any modern conveniences at all? If it wasn't invented by 1800, forget it. And you've agreed to do this for a whole week? That's right. I'm out to prove that Miss McIntosh is wrong. Look, if I should slip up now and then, I, I want all of you to remind me. Oh, we'll remind you. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you the big news. Coach Edwards has practically picked me to be cheerleader captain at the big track meet next Saturday. Every girl in school was after it. Congratulations. Well, I better get dressed. Richard is taking me to a dance tonight. Uh, they had dancing back in 1800. I checked. Patty? Yeah? Are you going to bathe before you dress? Of course. They did take baths in those days. <laughs> Not with hot running water, they didn't. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. I never knew water could be so heavy. No wonder they only took baths on Saturday nights. How does she get herself into these crazy situations? I don't think it's so crazy, Ross. I'm on Patty's side. I like what she's trying to prove. You know what I think? I think she's going to set us back a hundred years. <laughs> How was your bath? The Eskimos. 
By the time I put the last bucket of hot water into the tub, it was ice cold. What do you think you're doing? Putting you back in the 19th century. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to dry my hair. Why don't you rub two sticks together and start a fire? That's what the pioneers did. <laughs> yeah? Well, they should have used hair dryers. At least they wouldn't have gotten scalped that way. <laughs> I'd better get dressed. Richard's picking me up in a... What happened to the lights? Thomas Edison hasn't invented them yet, so I turned them off. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Here. Here what? Am I supposed to get dressed by that? Your, your great-great-grandmother did. Oh, yeah, but have you ever seen pictures of how she looked? <laughs> Me and my big mouth. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting hat. I couldn't get my hair done. Here. Here. Oh, there's my Lord and Master. You know, that Bella Lugosi is the greatest. Hi, Rich. Never mind the hi, Rich. You know you hung up on me this afternoon? Yeah, sorry about that. I can't talk on the telephone for a whole week. You can't? Why not? It hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> what? Look, it's a long story. Come on in and say hello to the old folks at home. Hasn't been invented yet? Now, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lane. Mr. Lane? Hello, Richard. Richard. Well... Let's go. He has all the social graces, hasn't he? Patty, Tootie Henderson's band starts playing at 8 o'clock. I don't want to miss any of it. We'll have just enough time to make the first number. Where is that dance, Richard? Over at Danceland. It's about three miles from here, isn't it? Yeah, but I've got my car outside. Oh. <laughs> You forgot what? Automobiles. I'm afraid your car's gonna have to stay right where it is, Richard. How are we gonna get to the dance? Walk? <laughs> <laughs> he asked you a question, dear. Yeah. Richard, my boy, hasn't it occurred to you that people don't get enough exercise these days? Sure. That's why we're going dancing. Mom. Would you mind walking? Walking three miles to a dance? Is it because you don't want her to ride with me? My driving's improved a lot, Mrs. Lane. I haven't had an accident since Monday, and it was nothing. I mean, I got a scratch running board, but it wasn't my fault. Your car has a running board? <laughs> what are you driving, Richard? An Essex. In Essex. If you're worried, I could spring for a taxi cab. Richard, Patty can't ride in any vehicle this week. Except a covered wagon. A what? <laughs> you mean like an automobile hasn't even been invented yet or something? <laughs> now, wait a minute. First the telephone. Come on, Richard. I'll explain on the way. Say goodnight to the nice people. Patty, if you think I'm going to walk three miles to the dance? you. A lazy one. You want to come in, Rich? This has been one of the most interesting evenings of my whole life. I'm sorry about the way things turned out, Rich. I didn't mind walking three miles to dance land. But the ten miles back... Uh, Patty, why do we have to leave when we got there? I told you because they were using microphones and... And the... pioneers didn't have microphones. Yeah. Now you want me to do this right, don't you? Sure. But without me... I'll see you next week when you come out of orbit and return to our time zone. You know, sometimes I think you really are an escaped Martian. Sorry, Rich. Oh, forget it. And I mean forget it. Rich. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and watch out for the wild Indians. <laughs> Is that you, Patty? Hi, Mom.
tomorrow, Papa. How are you, Aunt? Hmm. How was the dance? How do you spell fiasco? Hey, that's a pretty good word. Uh, please, no coaching unless it's my turn. Sorry about that. You know, I never should have dragged Richard into this. He's not up to it. Are you? If the pioneers could do it all their lives, I guess I can do it for one week. Oh, they must have been made of steel. Well, they were pretty rugged, but then they had to be. You know, it's amazing what you can do if you have to. Yeah, I hope you're right, Papa. I'd hate to let the kids at school down. They're all counting on me. You won't let them down. I think you're doing just fine. Yeah. So I'm starving to death. Well, didn't you stop at the shake shop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we stopped. Only I couldn't eat anything. They cooked their hamburgers on electric grills. And the pioneers never heard of a chocolate milkshake. Oh. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to fix you a great big pioneer sandwich, handmade. And a big glass of milk, cow made. <laughs> Thanks, Papa. Boy, they sure were losers, our ancestors. They didn't have anything. I'll tell you one thing they had. A wonderful, great, great, great granddaughter. One of us in this room is the murderer. And I'll tell you who it is. It's... to the movies with us, Patty? Yeah, so am I. I've been dying to see the monster with three heads. We'll tell you all about it. Oh, you don't have to. It's my autobiography. Good night. Good night. Hi, Kathy. Pioneer lady, you sure you don't want to go skating? I bet they ice skated. In the middle of a heat wave? Okay, see ya. Have fun. If you're going ice skating, put on a heavier sweater. I got one on a rig. We're leaving, darling. You sure you don't want to go to that uh, jazz concert with us? I'd love to. But it'd be cheating. I don't think the pioneers went to jazz concerts. You know, we're really proud of the way you're sticking to this, honey. Oh, there's nothing to it. You know, a lot of kids would get bitter about having to take icy baths and walk everywhere and not watch television or use electric lights or telephones or go to movies or jazz concerts. A lot of kids. But not you. No. That's wonderful, darling. We'll be back early. that all evening. Hmm. The big oh, track meet is Saturday. What just you mean we have to listen to that until Saturday? Fire! We're on fire! <laughs> what about that one? Noisy. Papa, yells are supposed to be noisy. It's up to me to give inspiration to the team. Being captain of the cheerleaders is a very big responsibility. Are you definitely captain? Well, practically definitely. It's between me and Alice, and uh, actually, she doesn't have a chance, poor kid. She has a voice somewhere between Ema Sumac and Louis Armstrong. <laughs> 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 
Watch our team on the beam. Shake them, break them, show them how they taste them. Raw Brooklyn! That definitely should inspire the old team. Martin, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Patty, how is uh, Project Pioneer coming along? Oh, that. <sighs> Great. I only have a few more days to go. You know, it's been fun. In a gruesome sort of way. I gotta go. Richard and I are going for a walk in the park. Oh, come home! Hey, you take care of that. She's lucky it's not the hunting season. <laughs> What do you have, Kathy? Oh, uh, Sammy, I think I'll have a cheeseburger and a chocolate milkshake. I'll have a peanut butter on date and nut bread and a banana split. Ah, the sink. Oh, I'll have a cheeseburger, a chocolate milkshake, peanut butter and date and nut bread, and a banana split. Another year with you, Richard, and we can all retire. What do you have, Patty? Glass of water, no ice. How long are you going to keep this up, Patty? Until I drop dead or Monday, whichever comes first. Well, I certainly admire you. Oh, you can afford to. You're eating a peanut butter sandwich on date nut bread and a banana split. They did eat in 1800, you know. Yeah, but the peanut butter didn't come in jars and the bread wasn't baked by machine. I can't talk about it. I get all choked up. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Alice. Patty. Hi, Alice. Hi, Richard. Oh, hi, Alice. Hi, Maggie. Hi. What are you having? Order something gooey. I enjoy hearing it. Oh, I'm too excited to eat. Why? What happened? Oh, guess who's the new captain of the cheerleaders at the track meet next Saturday? I don't have to guess. I am. Oh, not anymore, you're not. Coach Edwards just made me captain. He couldn't have. He practically promised it to me. Oh, did he? A little bird must have told him that you're living in the dark ages and didn't have a way to the track meet Saturday. That wasn't a little bird. That was a little rat. <laughs> Waiter, some cheese for my little friend here. You... Yes, Patty, but oh, I... Which, you just can't let Alice be captain. I know all the yells. Yes, Patty, And but... I was captain last year. Yes, Patty, but... All the kids are counting on me. Yes, Patty, but... Aren't you going to interrupt me? Of course not. Go on, sir. Well... It's just not fair. I... It just isn't fair. I should have stayed with yes, Patty, but... I'm sorry. But just uh, give me one good reason why. Uh, why? When I... Uh, I, I, uh, I was captain last year and... Now, I understand that you've entered into a bargain with Miss McIntosh, your history teacher. Is that right? Yes, sir. But that didn't include not being captain of the cheerleader. But you agreed not to use any mode of transportation not in use by 1800, right? Yes, sir. But... Patty, do you know how far it is from Brooklyn Heights High to the stadium where that track meet is being held? Not exactly. Well, I'll tell you exactly. It is 22 miles. Is that all? No, that is not all. If you're returning, it's 44 miles. I thought it was more than that. Now, when does your agreement with Miss McIntosh end? Uh, this Monday. Now, the track meet is this Saturday. You're going to have to make a choice, Patty. Do you want to get out of this thing with Miss McIntosh? No, sir. I've suffered this long. I'm going to finish it. Well, then you can see my problem. Obviously, you can't be to that track before noon on Saturday unless you use a, a, a bus or a car or a train. Coach Edwards? Huh? If I'm on that field by 12 noon Saturday, Will you let me be captain of the cheerleaders? Patty, if you can keep your bargain with Miss McIntosh and still be at that field at noon on Saturday, you can have my job. <laughs> that won't be necessary, but thanks. See you on the field Saturday. Yeah, I... Saturday! You know, I was thinking, Saturdays don't come around that often. Why don't we all take a drive up into the country today? Oh, I'm sure Patty can't go with us. In the first place, she's not riding in anything this week, and in the second place, today is the day of the big track meet. Oh, I forgot. She's captain of the yelling team. They call it cheerleaders. They can call it what they want, and I'll call it what I want. There's no problem. Patty isn't going to be the captain. I thought Coach Edward said she could be. Only if she got out there by noon. Kathy told me the field is 22 miles away. 22 miles away? Where is Patty? Upstairs asleep. What's after 9 o'clock? 
She couldn't make it out there now unless she ran all the way. Oh, hi, Kath. Good morning, Uncle Martin, Aunt Natalie, Ross. Good morning, Kath. Good morning, Kath. When I got up this morning, I found this on Patty's bed. It says, please don't worry about me. Henry is taking me to the track meet. We'll be back late. It's signed, Captain of the Cheerleaders, almost. When did she leave? I don't know. When I woke up, she was gone. I've been up for hours, and I didn't see her. Martin, she must have left in the middle of the night. You don't think that she'd be crazy enough to try to walk that 22 miles out to the field? And 22 miles back? That's 44 miles. That's impossible. Well, of course, it's been an impossible week. You know, frankly, I never thought she'd stick to that agreement she made, but she did. Well, I suppose if she could go back 165 years, she can walk 44 miles. 44 miles? Oh, Martin, she'll be dead when she gets home. You know, maybe I'll take a little drive out there. Well, you know, in, in case she'd like a lift back. Well, I mean, 44 miles. If I know Patty, Uncle Martin, she's not going to want a lift back. Yeah, she's stubborn. She'll crawl first. I don't know how the rest of you feel about this whole idiotic thing, but I'm so proud of her, I could just burst. You know, if she wasn't my daughter, I'd write an editorial about her. Maybe I will anyway. <laughs> Why don't we have a surprise for her when she gets back? What kind of surprise? Oh, I don't know, a victory celebration? See, that's a wonderful idea. I'll barbecue some steaks. I'll bake some bread. I'll put up some lanterns. I'll get a pan of hot water so she can soak her feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the best suggestion yet, Ross. She's going to be in terrible shape when she gets back here. Say, I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we set up a couch on the patio, and, and then she can lie down and eat her dinner? <laughs> hey, Dad, what time is Patty going to get here? What? I said, what time is Patty going to get here? I figure I wouldn't put the hot water into it until she got here. Oh, I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to start that fire for a couple of hours yet. So I figure uh, she's going to walk around three and a half, four miles an hour, maybe five, 22 miles. Uh, she's got to rest a little on the way. Uh, or she'll be here between 9 o'clock and uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, you should have been there, Papa. We won everything, the 100-yard dash, the 50-yard dash, the broad jumps, the hurdles, everything. Oh, boy, I wish you were there. Even you, Ross. Honey, you just came from the track meet? Yeah, I was a clean sweep. You mean you walked all the way out there and... Walked? No, I never could have made it in time. Henry gave me a lift out and brought me back. That's exactly what I would have done, Patty. Yeah, me too, sis. Well, actually, it was very wise of you, dear. Yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, I guess it was a kind of a silly agreement anyway. I don't understand what you're all talking about. Oh, about your giving up your Pioneer Week agreement with Miss McIntosh. Well, if Henry gave you a lift out, I think maybe you all better meet Henry. I don't blame her. She's entitled to her victory celebration. Oh, I bought her a present. She can keep this as a reminder of Pioneer Week. <laughs> I don't think she'll ever forget Pioneer Week. I know I won't. What's going on? Must be an overload in the neighborhood. Or even closer. What 
period did the caveman live in? Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins And you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike You can lose your mind When cousins Give me a report later. I'm going to the library now. Don't you want to go to a matinee this afternoon? The mechanical werewolf from 100,000 Leagues Under the Sea is playing. Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to miss it. It's your loss, cousin. Hello, Uncle Mark. Come on, now. Oh, boy. Patty, what are you doing? Watching our new neighbors move in. They have a grand piano. Maybe they have a teenage son who plays it. Or perhaps a gray-haired old grandmother. There's a baseball bat. That doesn't belong to any gray-haired old grandmother. Patty, don't you think you're being just a little inquisitive? Also friendly. How else can you get to know your neighbors? Look, they're carrying in a tool chest. Maybe the father's a burglar. There's a tennis racket. It looks like a teenage boy's tennis racket. He plays baseball and tennis. He's an athlete. What is she, a spy for the FBI? There's a car pulling up in front of the house. Family's getting out. There's the wife. Mm, she's wearing a mink coat. There's the burglar. There's my baseball player. What does he look like? He looks like he's 12 years old. That's what he looks like. 12 years old? Yippee, I got a new best friend. <laughs> yeah. Look at that flower chair. You sure don't have much taste in furniture. All right, Patty, come away from the window and stop being so nosy. Who's being nosy? <laughs> Lit most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet The ballet russe and Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Hi, who are you? Who are you? This is Keith Gordon, our new next door neighbor. He plays shortstop. Hi. How are you? Hello, Keith. Welcome to the neighborhood. Where are you from? He comes from Iowa. Idaho. In Brooklyn, we pronounce it Iowa. I understand you're going to be our next door neighbor. Yes, sir. My father moved away from Idaho to get away from his sister in law. My father's a lawyer. He makes $12,000 a year. You know, moving days are really kind of hectic. Maybe you'd like to have lunch here with us. Oh. What have you got? Hamburgers. Okay. Can my brother come too? Oh, you've got a little brother? Why, certainly he may come. You two can play here today. And, uh, Patty can help entertain you. Mom, the mechanical werewolf is Oh, playing. the mechanical werewolf can wait. And that's sure nice of you, Mrs. Lane. I'll go get Scotty. Oh, who wants to play nursemaid to three tadpoles? Have you ever seen a beautiful day go right down the drain? Oh, it won't hurt you this one afternoon. Papa, these are my golden years. Every minute counts. <laughs> He's coming. We'll leave for him. Good morning. I'm Scott Gordon. Well, hello, Scott. This is Mr. Lane. Hello, Scott. Our son, Ross. Right. Excuse me, I think I left the water running upstairs. <laughs> and that's Patty.
Keith told me we were invited to lunch. That's very kind of you, Mrs. Lane, but we couldn't impose like that. Why, it's no imposition at all. I understand your father's an attorney. He's a criminal lawyer, and you should see some of his clients. <laughs> Did you get the water turned off all right, honey? Oh, yes. Thank you, Father. Hi. Uh, well, I guess we'd better be going. Oh, aren't you going to stay to lunch? Well, some other time. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, my mother will drop over and give uh, your mother some tips on markets and cleaners and so on. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. And then uh, I can give you all the pert dirt on the neighborhood as seen through the eyes of a native. The pert dirt? Well, you know, the low down. How to tell the Mary Janes from the Scoties. If you get hung up with an ankle biter or a rink, you, you may just as well bag it. <laughs> You'll uh, have to teach me the language, whatever it is. It'll be a flip. I mean, uh, be a pleasure. Well, I guess I better get going. Uh, pardon me. It was nice meeting you. Come on, Keith. Yeah, so long. I'll walk you home. He's beautiful. I wouldn't call him beautiful. Oh, of course you wouldn't. What about Richard? Richard Ford. Oh, Richard. He's in Wyoming with his grandmother. Whoever said absence makes the heart grow fonder must have been a man. And not a very bright one. I thought you were going to a movie this afternoon. Oh. I decided to stick close to home and get a fast tan so I'd look good for him. Him who? Our new neighbor. You'll meet him at our wedding. Do you know what I love about you, Patty? You have both feet firmly planted in the clouds. Well, meeting a boy is better than killing a day at the library. Oh, I didn't exactly kill the day. I met a boy myself. You're putting me on. No. It was quite nice, actually. Handsome? Attractive. Mine's a blockbuster. Mine's rather shy, but very intellectual. Mine's the athletic type. He's an extrovert. Say, why don't we double date? Mine hasn't asked me for a date yet. Neither is mine, but why quibble about details? Let's all go to a movie tomorrow night. Patty, I, I can't just ask mine to take me to a movie. Boy, you need a lot of shaping up. You don't have to ask him. If you play your cards right, he'll ask you and he'll never know what hit him. What are you looking for? I want to see what movie the boys are going to take us to tomorrow night. Have you ever seen a dream walking, Maggie? Well, he's it. And he lives right next door. I mean, I can walk him home in practically no time. I'll call you back. Hi, Keith. Are you having a good time? Of course he's having a good time. He's my best friend. Come on. Uh, how's your family? Your mother, your father. Your brother. <laughs> They're okay, I guess. Uh, where, where are they now? She means where's your brother. She's looking for a date for tomorrow night. I don't know where he is. Do you know if your brother has any plans for tomorrow night? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> If you ever decide to take up mind reading, you'll make a fortune at it. What are you talking about? You are absolutely right. Mine asked me to go to the movie tomorrow night. Gong Ho! I told you we'd make it. Now all I have to do is get my half moving. How did you work it? I didn't work it. I was at the library and he came up to me and started talking. And Miss Harvey asked us to be quiet. So he said we could talk better at the shake shop. So we went to the shake shop and he asked me for a date. I couldn't have handled it better myself. Now I'll tell you what my strategy is going to be. I'm going to take the bull by the horns. I'll get it. That might be the bull himself. Olé. What? Oh, it's just an expression. Come on in. We were just talking about you. Well, I came about tomorrow night. Oh? First I thought it would be interesting to see a movie, but then... What a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? 
Look by his side. Oh, I'd like you to meet my cousin Kathy. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Scott. You've met. Well, yes, we met this morning. I, I told you. Don't you remember? You mean he's and then we met again this afternoon in the library. You mean he's Kathy, I came to tell you instead of going to a movie tomorrow night, I thought we could go to a concert at Philharmonic. Van Clyburn's playing. Would you like to hear him? I'd love to. Patty, would your date be interested in that? We could all go together. <clears throat> oh, uh, I, I don't think so. Hey, why don't you call him? Ah, uh, he's uh, busy tomorrow night. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. Well, I have some things to do upstairs. I'll see you, Scotty. <laughs> Where'd I go wrong? <laughs> you and your cousin really got along well, don't you? Oh, yes. We're more than cousins. We're very good friends. I saw him first, you double crossing boy snatcher. He's mine. That's ridiculous. He asked me for a date tomorrow night. Oh, sure. After you cornered him and forced him to. Shh. I didn't corner him, but I didn't force him to. Oh, you quiet ones are the ones to watch. My own cousin double-crossing her own cousin. Why didn't you tell me he was your boy next door? Would that have stopped you? No. That's what I thought. Shh. You told me he was intellectual and not very good-looking. That's the way I saw him. You told me he was an athlete and, and handsome. That's the way I saw him. You half Richard. I'll trade you Richard and two Beatle albums. <laughs> Why don't we let Scotty decide for himself? That's all right with me. You mean if he chooses me, you'll forget about it? That's exactly what I mean. But don't count on it, cousin. Hi, Ross. What are you doing? I'm shoveling snow. Hey, that's very funny. Gee, uh, homework can sure be a drag on a beautiful day like this. All the other kids are out playing baseball. I know. You should be out there with them. Yeah. I can just see you. You're standing up at bat. It's the bottom of the ninth. The other team's winning three to nothing with two outs and bases loaded. Everybody's counting on you. It's their last chance. I am? <laughs> three balls and one strike. The crowd's getting tense. Put your winds up. Stops. Looks around, makes sure all the runners are on base. Here comes the pitch! Strike! I'm not doing too well, am I? <laughs> Three and two, if you miss this one, the game's over. Am I going to miss it? How do I know? Here comes the wind up. He throws the ball, it's right over the plate, and you hit it! Yeah, listen to the crowd yell. You won the ball game, four to three. Oh, boy. Go out and get him, tiger. Who's gonna do my homework? Oh, I am. How can I play in the game? I don't have a glove. Why don't you buy one? I'd have to dip in a capital. All right, I'll buy one. And, and do, my do homework. your homework. Okay, who do I have to kill? You don't have to kill anybody. All I want you to do is talk to Keith for me. He's too young for you. I want you to talk to Keith and find out from him about Scotty. You know, what he likes and doesn't like. His, his taste in sports, books, girls. I know his taste in girls. You do? Yeah, he likes Kathy. <laughs> do you want that glove or don't you? I don't know. I'd hate to double-cross Kathy. Oh, well, all right then. Forget it. Okay, I'll do it. I'll hate myself, but I'll do it. Good boy. I'll come see you someday in Yankee Stadium. I'm not bad. Just we. Favorite actor, Lawrence Olivier. Favorite sports, horseback riding and archery. Favorite food, Strawberries with honey on them? Favorite color? Green. Is that the kind of stuff you wanted? 
Exactly. The FBI couldn't have done better. Do I get my glove? Here. Buy your own ball team. Thanks. I still hate myself. <laughs> Favorite book, Moby Dick. You know, Kathy, it's great finding someone who shares the same interests you have. You're the only girl I know who likes Bach cantatas. Am I? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. So am I. I'll fix you a snack. <laughs> Patty? Hello, Patty? Oh! I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Captain Ahab was just going after Moby Dick, and I... You're reading Moby Dick? Yeah. I'm afraid I'm kind of a nut about it. I read it every few months. I've never seen you read it before. What's that bow and arrow for? What bow and arrow? Oh, this. I'm so used to holding it, I didn't even notice it. I'm getting ready for the archery tournament. You're interested in archery? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm not on horseback riding. <laughs> Gee, me too. Yeah? Oh, would you like some strawberries? I'm afraid I'm always eating them. Well, so am I. I guess it's my favorite food in the whole world. No. <laughs> oh! Wait a minute. I ruined them. Put honey on them. Honey? Yeah. That's the way I love them. No. Well, I thought I was the only one who ate them that way. I guess we never really got to talk before. Well, it's never too late. Uh, shall we get that snack now, Scotty? No, I'll just have some of these, thanks. <laughs> I must have read this ten times. Me too. You probably disagree with me, but I hope Olivier does the remake. Don't agree. He's my favorite actor. Really? There are still some things about the book that I don't understand. It's just full of symbolism, you know? Well, I know. That's what I like about it. It's, it's deep. Yeah. Tell me, Scott, do you think that Moby Dick is really a white whale? Or do you think that he's that terrible, terrible thing inside us that we must all hunt and kill? I think he's Captain Ahab's conscience. Do you? Well, it's exactly what I think. <laughs> well, I've written a thesis on it. Have you? I'd love to read it. Oh, would you? I'll bring it to school tomorrow. Maybe we can meet at the uh, shake shop and I'll give it to you, if it won't bore you. Born. I think it's the most interesting thing in the whole world. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get some archery in. Oh, great. I'd like that. <laughs> Good night, Kath. Gee, Kathy, thanks for a great evening. Good night, Scott. All right. Oh, Scotty. Mm -hmm. My book. S sure. Thank you. I can't be without it. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow, Patty. Good night. Good night. Did you have a nice time with Scotty? Yes. Did you? What do you mean? I mean that when you're out in that archery tournament tomorrow eating honey-covered strawberries and shooting at white whales, don't turn your back because you're liable to find a harpoon in it. <laughs> if there's anything I can't stand, it's a sore loser. to say. How long has this been going on? Since he moved next door. The competition is fierce. Gee, nobody ever fought over me like that. I most certainly did. I just didn't let you know about it. Oh? You want some? Mm. 
Well, with all the boys there are in the world, I don't see why Patty and Kathy have to like the same one. I didn't even think they liked the same type. They don't. Each of them sees different things in Scotty. Patty sees him as a handsome athlete, and Kathy sees him as an introverted intellectual. Sounds like a well-rounded boy. He's very nice. Well, how does he feel about them? Which one does he like? That's the problem. He likes them both. Right. Sounds to me like one of them is going to have to give him up. Which one? Well, if I knew the answer to that, I'd make myself editor of the Lovelorn column. Martin. Please do something. Okay. I'll make another sandwich. Chicken, potato salad, coleslaw, corned beef, uh, hot dogs, ham sandwiches, and soft drinks. Well. I've got my half. I wonder what he's bringing. Going on a picnic? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. Scott just loves picnics. <laughs> Have a good time. Oh, we will. Look, I'm sorry about this, Kathy. When you tangle with the master, you have to expect to be outmaneuvered. There's Scotty. He's so prompt. Another one of his admirable qualities. Gong Ho! Oh, and don't wait up for me! I'll be back late. Hello, darling. Hiya, Patty. How'd you know it was me? Richard. Richard. Uh, Richard, you weren't supposed to be back for another two weeks yet. Oh, I really missed you. Did you miss me? I knew how miserable you'd be here all alone without me. What's that? What's what? Uh, that basket. It looks like somebody's gone on a picnic. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, you? Me? No, no, uh, Kathy. Uh, and you and I are gonna go for a nice ride in the country. Ah, that sounds great. I'll be right back. <laughs> Death. Are you sure? Absolutely. Then forget it. Oh, please, Kathy. I want you to pretend to be me and go on that picnic with Scotty this afternoon. Why should I do that? Because Richard got back. I could never explain Scotty to him. Look, you can keep my date with Scotty this afternoon as me, and then I can keep my dinner date with Scotty as me. I shouldn't do it. Oh, why not? You won't have any trouble fooling him. Think of all the fun you'll have at the beach. All right, I'll do it. You're very persuasive. And a girl. Richard certainly picked an awkward time to come home, didn't he? he? Sure did. I'll never forget you for this, Kath. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. I remember this is just a long out. Kathy just left on her picnic. Did she? Yeah, she's getting in the car with some guy. He's not much to look at. They can't all look like you, Richard. No, I guess not. Kathy's a pretty thoughtful girl. You know, when she phoned me in Wyoming and told me how lonely you were, I came right back. She phoned you in Wyoming? Yeah, she wanted to surprise you. And she did. She really did. You didn't have any trouble fooling Scotty? Oh, no, no. He thought I was you. Good. Hello? Yes, this is Kathy. Hello. Tonight? Yes, I'd love to. All right, then. I I'll see you at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Goodbye, Scotty. Scotty? Maybe you've forgotten, but we have a dinner date tonight. I don't think so. You don't think so what? 
I'm afraid you and Scott had a terrible quarrel this afternoon. We did. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid you were really quite rude to him. I was. Therefore, I, I don't believe he'll be seeing you again. Well, I'd better get dressed. You know how Scott hates to be kept waiting. Bye. <coughs> you tangle with a master, you have to expect to be outmaneuvered. Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, a 